the real estate market crashing right now? I am starting to see a lot of information out there on people saying the real estate market is crashing. And so I wanna really dive into this because this is an important thing. The real estate market can sometimes dictate where the entire economy goes for the negative or for the positive, okay? So real estate matters a lot. We don't talk about it a lot on this channel, but it does matter a lot to the overall economy. So what I wanna go through is I wanna go through the three main points that a lot of people are also starting to talk about real estate Estate's crashing, real estate's going down, real estate prices are weakening, okay? Uh, we're gonna talk about weakness in California and New York. Those are the two markets everybody's kind of looking to, uh, especially here in the United States, and that's what everybody's talking about. California, specifically Los Angeles, and New York City, okay? And, you know, those are their two big states here, you know, our two big states, New York, California, as far as the ones that, you know, have a global appeal across the globe. We'll talk about that, okay? New housing starts is another thing people are talking about. New housing starts have been weak recently. That's what a lot of people are talking about. And lastly, interest rates. Interest rates are going up, okay? So everybody's pointing to these three things. And uh, after I get done giving you all three of these things, I'm gonna tell you whether I expect the real estate market to weaken big time here and completely crash, or if it's already crashing and, and what we can do about it and whatnot. So I'll give you that at the end of this video. So California, New York, specifically, we're talking about Los Angeles uh, and Manhattan and whatnot. That's where a lot of people talk about pricing. And a lot of the especially on the high-end side, which most of Los Angeles and Manhattan is on the high-end side, a lot of that has gone down, okay? Um, high-end side, what I mean by that is basically homes priced over half a million dollars, okay? Um, a lot of these homes, and especially in Los Angeles and Manhattan and whatnot, are priced over a million dollars, okay? Million dollars here in Vegas is gonna get you a mansion. A million dollars in New York City is gonna get you a cardboard box, okay? They're two totally different places. So these are kind of seen as the main markets that people pay attention to, that people look at for numbers, oh, it's really strong there. It means everything's going well for everybody. It's really weak there. Oh man, it's about to go bad for everybody. Okay. So that, those are two markets. Something we got to keep in mind is taxes have changed in a major way. Okay. For these two states, New York and California, taxes have changed for the worse for these folks, especially if you are in the top 10%. Okay. If you're in the top 10%, first off, you can no longer write off your state taxes against your federal tax. You used to be able to do that. It was almost a way of like um, welfare for the rich people. You could, especially you know the wealthier people, if you pay in a lot in taxes and state taxes, you go ahead and rate that against your federal taxes and pay less as a tax impact. Meanwhile, somebody that lives in you know, a no tax state like Nevada or Texas or Florida, we never pay in any state taxes anyway, so we have nothing to write off against those federal taxes. Now you are capped off at writing off only $10,000 in property taxes, okay? In some of these markets, 10, the, the top 10% pay in a lot more than $10,000 in property taxes. So now you can only write off $10,000 in property taxes. So you can no longer write off state taxes against federal taxes. On top of that, you can only write off $10,000 in property taxes per year. Those are two massive changes that end up hurting the market, okay? Then on top of that, you got these states always, you know, I, I was just watching Million Dollar Listings lot, uh, New York the other day, okay, with my wife, we're watching it, and uh, all they kept talking about the agents was this 1% fee that New York now charges. There's some extra 1% fee, and you know, the sellers and the buyers will kind of fight against this 1% fee, and it's just another taxation these markets are doing. So this just makes for an ugly, ugly situation with taxes, guys. This makes for an ugly situation. So you have buyers that say, do I even really want to live in New York? Do we even really want to live in California? Maybe I want to move to a market where there are no state taxes, okay? Somewhere like a Nevada, uh, you know, a Texas, Florida, or some of those markets, or there are a lot of states that just have a considerably less you have to pay in in state taxes versus some of these states. I mean, if you're a high-end earner in California, you could be paying in up to 10% of your money in, in state taxes. These numbers are high, guys. Same thing with New York City. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, okay? So you have this kind of hurting the market, the whole taxes and whatnot, okay? Then on top of that, you also have a situation where these markets have attracted a lot of Chinese buyers, you know, especially after 2009, a lot of Chinese buyers have come in, all right? But what has happened is China has begun to get much stricter in regards to pulling out money and trying to invest it in properties internationally. Just a year and a half ago, the Chinese government put in a policy that if you were to take out a, you know, a major amount of money, you could not buy foreign properties with that money. You had a pledge that you were not buying foreign properties with that money. They also made it much harder for you know, relatives and friends and family and whatnot to pull out extra money so you could go buy a property in the United States. So uh, as much as over 12% of the U.S. market in terms of foreign buyers 
are, have been Chinese buyers, okay? Especially since like 2010 to 2015. Around 12% plus of foreign buyers are Chinese buyers, okay? Where do Chinese buyers love to buy? California and New York. They also love to buy London, okay? They, they, when they think international, they're gonna think of the biggest, the biggest cities out there. They're gonna think of Los Angeles, they're gonna think of Manhattan, they're gonna think about London. And all those, those, those markets have seen unbelievable increases in properties uh, values since 2009, okay? A lot of them even going through the recession, it wasn't that weak, okay? But the Chinese helped in this thing. So all of a sudden you have the Chinese, you know, getting them to be in a position where it's much harder to pull out money. Then on top of that, you have all the, these tax things going against the high end of the market. And it's pretty natural that in these type of markets, you're gonna see values go down, okay? You're gonna see values go down. Now, keep in mind, Chinese buyers weren't buying in, in, in Idaho, okay? Chinese buyers weren't buying in North Dakota. Chinese buyers weren't buying in, uh, you know, Dallas, Texas, maybe somewhere, but for the most part, you know, most of them were not, okay? So a lot of these mar markets have not really seen that, that huge bunch of Chinese buyers come in, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of parts of Canada had huge amounts of Chinese buyers, some of the big Canadian cities out there. Taxes have hurt those markets in particular. So those markets are natural that they're gonna go down, okay? So the fact that we're looking at that and we're saying that's gonna dictate the whole market, these have some very special things going on with them that are, uh, you know, have helped them and are now hurting them, okay? Something to keep in mind. All right, guys, let's get into point number two. So point number two, a lot of people like to bring out is around new housing starts and how new housing starts so far this year have been weaker, okay? So that's what they're looking at. They're saying new housing start data is looking pretty week, all right? Well, once again, you have to look further than just, you know, just looking at broad numbers. So many people just want to look at broad numbers and make judgments without looking at the underlying things on why those numbers and everything, everything has a, you know, a cause and a reaction to it, okay? you got to look deeper with these things. You can't just look at a housing start numbers and say, oh, they're looking a little weak. Oh, I guess they're just weak. No, what we had is 2017, we had an unbelievable year for the home builders. And what ended up happening is many of the home Home builders, most of the home builders, sold out a lot of their land way, way earlier than they had expected to, okay? I know one of my investments, Toll Brothers, did this. They knocked out of the ballpark 2017. They got a ton of contracts lined up. They sold out of land way faster than expected. They kept beating on numbers. Quarter after quarter, they would beat, they'd beat, they'd beat on these numbers, post these unbelievable numbers, and they sold out a lot of their land just early, okay? Now, you gotta understand, it's not just so easy to just get land and get up and running with a new development, okay? The amount of regulation you have to go through, even in a market like Nevada, which is you know much more business friendly than most states out there, it's a long process. First, you got to bid on the land, then you got to do all the excavation. You got to get a million different permits from so many different state and county officials and whatnot. It's ridiculous, guys. It's a ridiculous process. So if you go ahead and you sell out your land faster, that's great. That's going to make all your, your short-term numbers look phenomenal. And that's what we saw with the home builders in 2017. Their numbers were off the charts. However, a lot of them have land shortages, all right? A lot of them have land shortages that are just waiting for more and more land to open up, all right? So that's something we gotta keep in mind. It's not just like, oh, oh, I sold out of my homes over here. Oh, let me just, I see some land over there. Let me just buy it real quick and let's just clear that up. It doesn't work like that, guys. It's a process, okay? It's a process. So what I see is I see a lot of these, these home builders is I see them being in a position where the back half of 2018 could be really strong for them going into 2019, okay? As long as the economy stay strong. I can see the back half of 2018 into 2019 being very strong because we have a situation where a lot of them just sold out of their land. They sold out much faster. than I know Toll Brothers, in, uh, specifically here in Vegas, right? If I want to buy a Toll Brothers home, there's only like really realistically like one community I can buy. All the other ones already sold out. So, you know, th that's what happens here at the end of the day, okay? So housing starts, I, I expect those to pick back up as long as the economy stays strong in the back half of this year going into 2019. Let's get into point number three now. Point number three is around interest rates. There is always an interesting thing that happens with interest rates when they start to go up. And we've seen interest rates start to go up, all right? So interest rates have started to rise a bit. And that always is just something that happens with the market, especially when our interest rates were artificially low for such a long time, all right? So many people got used to, you know, a 3% rate that all of a sudden if it rises to four, four and a half, everybody's like, whoa, 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 what the heck is going on? 
What I believe is going to start to happen with interest rates is they are going to continue to rise. As long as the economy stays strong, the overall economy stays strong, we keep growing GDP at a three, especially if we grow, grow at a 4% plus clip, all right? As long as the economy stays strong, interest rates will continue to rise. And I think sooner or later, people are going to start to realize, hmm, it might be a lot more interesting for me to buy a house now at a 4% interest rate rather than buy it at eight or nine or 10% rate like they may be in a few years if the economy stays strong. Because if the economy stays strong, interest rates aren't going down. They will continue to rise and rise and rise and rise, okay? And next thing you know, we're gonna have an interest rate of seven, eight, nine, ten 10%, and people are gonna be uh, start to go into the mode of fear of missing out, like, oh my gosh, interest rates might go to 15%. We need to start buying and whatnot. That's gonna start to happen. At first, you have the adjustment of, oh man, interest rates are so expensive now, I got to pay four and a half percent versus three percent a few years ago. Then all of a sudden it continues to rise and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, uh, maybe I should get in now at a five percent interest rate rather than an eight percent interest rate a few years from now. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind there. Interest rates are continuing to rise and it just kind of shocked everybody at first but then everybody gets used to it. So in my opinion is real estate crashing. And I'm talking specifically about the United States is real estate market crashing. Is it gonna crash more and whatnot? I do not see real estate market as crashing. I think some markets have had to make adjustments specifically out in California and New York, okay? Uh, I think those markets have had to make adjustments. I think the interest rate deal is something that's just going on in the short term here where it just kind of shocks everybody at first and then everybody realizes, well, I'm doing pretty good in life. I'm doing pretty good economically. Interest rates are probably gonna continue to rise, so I should probably buy now. So I think this shock of, oh my gosh, interest rates have all of a sudden gone up, I think that will start to dissipate. Also, on new housing starts, I think we're gonna start seeing very strong numbers in the back half of this year going into 2019. If the economy stays strong, and new housing starts are gonna be unbelievably strong because a lot of people love those new homes. Why? Because they're more modern. The look of them, the feel of them, people like a turnkey home, right? And so they, they, they walk into one of these new homes, these model homes, and it's like, wow, look at this. This is awesome. Then if they're looking for a home and they go to some of the resale market, they're like, oh my gosh, this, looks, this home looks like it was built back in the 80s. Styles have changed so much. Countertops, flooring, all that stuff, all that, that, that most consumers look at, right? If you're a real good real estate buyer, you don't look at that type of stuff. You look at the bones of the house and then you say, well, we can make adjustments here and adjustments there. But uh, you know, most people, most consumers in general, they're looking at the floors, the counters, and they're gonna be wowed in the ceilings and the high doors like we have that are like 10 feet in the air. That's what most people look at when they go in a home, all right? That's what most people look at, and that's what attracts them to new housing starts. And I think that that will be uh, one of the main reasons why new housing starts will start to pick up in the back half of this year. The whole real estate crash, I think, is overblown. I think it's having to make an adjustment here. In terms of uh, will California and New York continue to go down, I wouldn't be surprised that they do continue to go down. When you've had as much negative, you know, as many negative things happen in the tax brackets as, as those people have, especially in the high end, they have to lower prices and lower prices on homes. So in those, those markets, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to struggle. They've been on the uh, rich welfare, I'll call it, for a while now, and now all of a sudden that's getting taken away and it's like, whoa, what happened, okay? I think a lot of these type of people are gonna start to look to other markets that are more tax friendly rather than their states that uh, just take your money hand over fist, man. That's that's what those type of states do. So anyways, let me know what your guys' opinion is down there in the comment section. I would love to hear from you guys as always. Do you believe it's a real estate crash going on right now? Do you believe it's gonna get much worse in the real estate market? Do you believe it's not a real estate crash? Do you believe real estate prices will start to go up quite a bit going into 2019 and forward? What do you think is gonna happen with interest rates? I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section as always. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.